हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर निमिषा जादौन फ्रॉम स्कूल ऑफ स्टडीज इन्वायरमेंटल केमिस्ट्री जिवाजी यूनिवर्सिटी ग्वालियर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट अ मॉड्यूल लेबोरेटरी ऑपरेशंस एंड गुड लेबोरेटरी प्रैक्टिसेस अंडर द पेपर ऑफ फंडामेंटल्स ऑफ एनालिटिकल केमिस्ट्री द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इंक्लूडिंग द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ लेबोरेटरी मटेरियल्स then basics of titration tolerance and precision of the glass sphere techniques for calibrating glass sphere and the good laboratory practices the analytical chemistry requires measurements in order to get the facts like several standard items are common to most analysis and will be required when performing the experiments they include the analytical balance and the volumetric glass sphere and the items such as drying ovens and the filters the detailed explanation of physical manipulation and use of this equipment is best done by the laboratory instructor when we practice with the actual ex uh, equipments particularly since the type and the operation of the equipment will vary from one laboratory to the another so in this module we are going to learn about the various operational procedures and the good laboratory uh, practices that uh, uh, we have to opt when we are working in any ordinary or the sophisticated laboratory now we discuss here about the laboratory notebook in analytical laboratory cleanliness and neatness are the utmost important this also applies to the keeping of an orderly notebook all data should be recorded permanently in ink when they are collected there is probably an additional saving of time since you will be more organized in carrying out the operations of the analysis if you have train yourself to put the data down in an orderly fashion chances for a mistake are reduced uh, uh, by using the laboratory notebook and to detect possible errors in measurements or the calculation when we make an immediate record data will not be lost or transferred incorrectly if they are recorded directly in a notebook instead of collected on scraps of papers for practicing analytical chemist and on the job applications it is especially important to use the lab notebook for entering observations and measurements directly complete documentation is essential for forensic or industrial laboratories for legal or patent consideration in industrial research labs the notebook must generally be signed and dated by another person familiar with the work to assure legal patent priority if applicable modern instrument software allows analysts to collect store and process data directly from the instrument signal based on appropriate calibration it is important that software and the calibration be validated as for remainder of analysis as a part of good laboratory practice the table 1 lists the properties of materials used in the manufacture of common laboratory apparatus the borosilicate glass is most commonly used material for laboratory apparatus such as beakers flasks pipettes and burettes it is stable to hot solutions and to rapid changes in temperature this is the list of properties of laboratory materials uh, that uh, we have discussed here then we discuss here about the titration titration is performed with sample solution in a flask flask is swilled with right hand while the stop cock is manipulated with left hand solution can be more efficiently stirred by means of a magnetic stirrer and the stirring bar the picture shows the proper technique for the titration as 
titration proceeds indicator changes color in vicinity where titrant is added owing to local excesses but it rapidly revert to original color as titrant is dis, uh, dispersed through the solution to react with sample as end point is approached return to the original color occur more slowly since the dilute solution must be mixed more thoroughly to consume all titrant at this point titration should be stopped and sides of flask washed down with distilled water from wash bottle the fourth one is the tolerance and the precision of the glass sphere the national institutes of standards and technology has prescribed certain tolerance of absolute error for different volumetric glass sphere for volumes of greater than about 25 ml tolerance is within 1 part 1000 that is ppt relative but it is larger for the smaller volumes the letter a stamp on side of a volumetric flask burette or the pipettes indicate that it uh, complies with class a tolerances the volumetric glass sphere that meets uh, meets nist specification or that is certified by the nist can be purchased but at a significantly higher price than the uncertified glass sphere less expensive glass sphere may have the tolerance double those specified by the nist it is a simple matter however to calibrate glass sphere to an accuracy as good as or exceeding the nist specifications now we discuss here about the techniques for calibrating glass sphere number 1 is the volumetric flask calibration to calibrate the volumetric flask first weigh the clean dry flask and stopper then fill it to the mark with distilled water there should be no droplets on neck if there are blot them with tissue paper the flask and water should be equilibrated to room temperature weigh filled flask and record temperature of water to 0.1 degree centigrade increase in weight represents weight in air of water contained by flask the next one is the pipette calibration to calibrate a pipette weigh a dry flask with a rubber stopper or a weighing bottle with a glass stopper or cap depending on volume of water to be weighed fill pipette with distilled water and deliver water into flask or the bottle using proper pipetting technique and quickly stopper the container to avoid evaporation loss reweighing to obtain the weight in air of water delivered by the pipette then the next one is the burette calibration calibrating burette is similar to the procedure for the pipette except several volumes will be delivered internal bore of burette is not perfectly cylindrical and it will be a bit wavy so actual volume delivered will vary both plus and minus from nominal volumes marked on burette as increased volumes are delivered now the next is selection of glass sphere as in weighing operation there will be situations when you need to accurately know volumes of reagents or samples measured or transferred and others in which only proximate measurements are required to prepare a standard solution of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid it can't be done by measuring an accurate volume of concentrated acid and diluting to a known volume because the concentration of the commercial acid is not known adequately hence an approximate solution is prepared that is then standardized the commercial acid is about 12.4 molar to prepared 1 liter of a 0.1 molar solution 
about 8.1 ml need to be taken and diluted a 10 ml graduated cylinder or the 10 ml measuring pipette will suffice and acid can be diluted in an ungraduated 1 liter bottle to dilute a strong uh, a stock standard solution accurately then a transfer pipette must be used and the dilution must be done in a volumetric flask. Any volumetric measurements that is a part of actual analytical measurement must be done with accuracy required of analytical measurements. An accurate portion of a sample should be taken. Preparation of a standard solution from an accurately weighed reagent and the accurate dilution should be done. Burets are used for accurate measurement of variable volumes as in a titration. The next is the preparation of a standard base solution. Sodium hydroxide is usually used as titrant when a base is required. It contains significant amount of water and sodium carbonate and so it cannot be used as a primary standard. For accurate work, sodium carbonate must be removed from NaOH because it reacts to form a buffer that decreases sharpness of endpoint. In addition, an error will result if NaOH is standardized using a phenolphthalein endpoint and then methyl orange endpoint is used in titration of a sample. Sodium carbonate is insoluble in nearly saturated sodium hydroxide. It is removed by dissolving weight NaOH in a volume of water equal to its weight in grams. The insoluble sodium carbonate can be allowed to settle for several days and then clean supernatant liquid can be carefully decanted or it can be filtered in a gauche crucible with an asbestos mat. The former procedure is preferred because of carcinogenic nature of asbestos. This procedure does not work with KOH that is potassium hydroxide because K2CO3 remains soluble. In many routine determinations not requiring highest degree of accuracy, Carbonate or the carbon dioxide impurities in water will result in an error that is small enough to be considered negligible. For highest accuracy, carbon dioxide should be removed from all water used to prepare solutions for acid-based titrations, particularly alkaline solutions. This is conveniently done by boiling and cooling under cold water tap. Sodium hydroxide is standardized by titrating a weight quantity of primary standard potassium acid phthalate which is a moderately weak acid like acetic acid, a phenolphthalein endpoint is used. Sodium hydroxide solution should be stored in a plastic bottle to prevent absorption of carbon dioxide from air. Now the next is preparation of a standard acid solution. The hydrochloric acid is a usual titrain for the titration of bases. It is convenient to handle. It is not a primary standard and an approximate concentration is prepared simply by diluting concentrated acid. The primary standard sodium carbonate is usually used to standardize the hydrochloric acid solution. The disadvantage is that the end point is not sharp unless the methyl red or the methyl purple uh, and so forth is used as the indicator and the solution is boiled at end point. A modified methyl orange endpoint may be used without boiling, but this is not so, uh, so sharp. The another disadvantage is low formula weight of sodium carbonate. The tris hydroxymethyl uh, amino methane is another primary standard that is more convenient to use. 
it is an uh, non hygroscopic but it is still a fairly weak base with a low molecular weight if a standardized anaerobic solution is available the hcl can be standardized by titrating and aliquot with the anaerobic that is sodium hydroxide end point is sharp and titrated titration is more rapid the sodium hydroxide solution is a secondary standard any error in standardizing this will be reflected in the accuracy of hydrochloric acid solution the hydrochloric acid is titrated with base to minimize absorption of carbon dioxide in titration flask then the phenolphthalein and the bromo uh, thymol blue can be used as indicator now we discuss about the other apparatus handling and treating samples besides apparatus for measuring mass and volume there are a number of other items of equipment commonly used in analytical procedure number 1 is blood samples the syringes are used to collect blood samples the stainless steel or the aluminum needle are generally used with glass or plastic syringe these usually present no problem of contamination although special precautions may be required for certain trace element analysis then the next is the furnaces and ovens a muffle furnace is used to ignite samples to high temperatures either to convert precipitates to a weighable form or to burn organic materials prior to inorganic analysis there should be some means of regulating temperature since losses of some metals may occur at temperatures in excess of 500 degree centigrade the temperatures up to about 1200 degree centigrade can be reached with muffle furnaces drying oven is used to dry samples prior to weighing these ovens are well ventilated for uniform heating the usual temperature employed is about 110 degree centigrade but temperatures of 200 to 300 degree centigrade may be obtained now the next one is the hoods a fume hoods is used when chemicals or the solutions are to be evaporated when perchloric acid or acid solutions of perchlorate are to be evaporated fumes should be collected or the evaporation should be carried out in fume hoods especially designed for perchloric acid work vertical laminar flow stations are preferred when fumes are generated that should not be blown over operator facilities are available to exhaust noxious fumes now the next is the wash bottles a wash bottle of some sort should be handy in any analytical laboratory to be used for quantitative transfer of precipitates and solutions and to wash precipitates these are commercially available in a variety of shapes and sizes then the centrifuges and the filters the centrifuge has many useful applications particularly in clinical laboratory where blood may have to be separated into fractions such as serum or plasma and proteins may have to be separated by precipitation followed by centrifuging filters for filtering precipitates are of various types the uh, guch crucible sintered glass crucible and porcelain filter crucibles are commonly used here we are discussing about the techniques of filtration by proper fitting of filter paper rate of filtration can be increased the filter paper is folded in shape of a cone with overlapping edges of 2 quarters not quite meeting 1 by 8 inch apart about plus minus inch in torn away from corner of inside edge this will allow a good seal against the funnel to prevent air bubbles from being drawn in 
after the folded paper is placed in the funnel it is weighted with the distilled water the stamp is filled with water and the top of the weight paper is pressed against the funnel to make a seal precipitate should occupy not more than one third to one half of filter paper in funnel because many precipitates tend to creep do not allow the water level to go over the top of the paper precipitate should be allowed to settle in beaker before filtration is begun bulk of the clean liquid can then be decanted and filtered at a rapid rate before the precipitate fills the pore of filter paper with a proper fit no air bubble will be sucked into the funnel and the suction supplied by the weight of the water in a stem will be uh, increase the rate of uh, filtration the filtration should be started immediately the next is the igniting precipitates or the gravimetric analysis ignition may be done in a muffled furnace or by heating with a burner if a burner is to be used filter crucible should be placed in a porcelain or the platinum crucible to prevent reducing gases of flame diffusing through pores of filter before a precipitate is collected in a filter crucible or transferred to a crucible crucible should be dried to cons- uh, constant weight if precipitate is to be dried or it should be ignited to constant weight if precipitate is to be ignited the crucible should be allowed to cool in a desiccator for at least half hour before the weighing reed hot crucible should be allowed to cool before uh, redness before placing them in desiccator now the next is the obtaining the sample collecting a representative samples is most critical aspects of the analysis many professional societies have specified definite uh, instructions for sampling given materials namely the association of official analytical chemist international and the american public health association the problem involves obtaining a sample that is representative of the whole this sample is called the gross sample its size may vary from a few grams or Uh, less to several pounds depending on type of bulk material once a representative gro- uh, gross sample is obtained it may have to be reduced to a sufficiently small size to be handled this is called the sample once the sample is obtained an aliquot or portion or uh, of it will be analyzed This aliquot is called the analysis sample. Several replicate analysis on same sample may be performed by taking separate aliquots. In clinical laboratory, gross samples is usually satisfactory for use as sample because it is not large and it is homogeneous. The next is the operations of drying and preparing a solution of the analyte. After a sample has been collected a solution of the analyte must usually be prepared before analysis can be continued the sample must be weighed or volume measured if sample is already a solution then extraction precipitation or concentration of the analyte may be done that include drying the sample the solid samples are usually dried in an oven at 105 to 110 degree centigrade for 1 or 2 hour other non essential water such as the entrapped within a crystal may require higher temperature for the removal the decomposition or the side reaction of the sample must be considered during drying the material unstable under conditions of heat can be dried by setting it in a desiccator the next one is the sample dissolution 
before the analyte can be measured some sort of sample alteration is generally necessary to get the analyte uh, into solution or for biological samples to rid it of interfering organic substances such as protein there are two type of sample preparation number one those that totally destroy sample matrix and the number two is those that are non-destructive or only partially destructive the next is dissolving inorganic uh, solvent solids strong mineral acids are good solvents for many inorganics hydrochloric acid is a good general solvent for dissolving metals that are above hydrogen in electromotive series the nitric acid is a strong oxidizing acid and will dissolve most of the common metals non ferrous alloys and acid insoluble sulfides the perchloric acid when heated to drive off water becomes a very strong and efficient oxidizing agent in dehydrated state destruction of organic materials for inorganic analysis burning or acid oxidation animal and plant tissues biological fluids and organic compounds are usually decomposed by weight digestion with a boiling oxidizing acid or mixture of acids or by dry ashing at a high temperature of 400 to 700 degree centigrade in a muffle furnace it is including number 1 dry ashing simple dry ashing for organic and biological materials is the most commonly employed technique if an oxidizing material is added to the sample the ashing efficiency is enhanced the second one is the weight digestion the weight digestion with a mixture of nitric and sulfuric acids is second most often used oxidation procedure usually a small amount of sulfuric acid is used with large volumes of nitric acid the weight digestion are usually performed in gel dal flask the nitric acid destroys the bulk of the organic matter but it does not get hot enough to destroy the last traces at this point the solution gets very hot and sulfuric acid acts on remaining organic matter digestion is continued until the solution is clears the next is microwave preparation of samples microwave ovens are now widely used for rapid and efficient drying and acid decomposition of samples Laboratory ovens are specially designed to overcome limitations of household ovens. Advantages of microwave digestions include reduction of dissolution time from hours to minute. Now the next is the acid digestion. The digestions are normally done in a closed plastic containers either Teflon or poly, uh, PFA or the polycarbonate. this is to avoid acid fumes in the oven next is the protein free filtrate the protein uh, in the biological fluid interfere with many analyses and must be removed non destructively several reagents will uh, precipitate protein trichloroacetic acid tungstic acid and the barium hydroxide plus zinc sulfate are some of the common ones a measured volume of sample is usually treated with a measured volume of reagent following precipitation of the protein the sample is filtered through dry filter paper without washing or as it is centrifuged now we discuss here about the good laboratory practices when an analyst adheres to the general guidelines he or she will generally perform measurements properly and if well established methods are used changes are good and will achieve acceptable results but depending on what the results are to be used for this may not be enough to satisfy the client as a result 
द कंसेप्ट ऑफ गुड लेबोरेटरी प्रैक्टिस मैथड वैलिडेशन एंड द क्वालिटी एश्योरेंस फॉर टेस्टिंग लेबोरेटरीज हैव इवॉल्व एज एन अप्रोच टू अश्योर टू द एक्सटेंट पॉसिबल दैट रिपोर्टेड एनालाइज रिजल्ट आर करेक्ट विद इन प्रिस्क्राइब और डॉक्यूमेंटेड लिमिट्स the basic elements for glp are defined here the bottom line is that the lab management and the analyst should use the common sense in judging what quality assurance procedure should be implemented based on the goal of the analysis experience available methods time and cost constraints and the like but the closer the analyst adheres adheres the accepted guidelines the more confined he or she will be in result a proper analysis is more than simply receiving a sample and performing a one shot analysis if it is not properly documented the analysis effort time and cost may be wasted the exact definition of good laboratory practices depends on who is defining it and for what purpose a broad definition encompasses such issues and organ as organization of the laboratory management personnel facilities equipment operations method validations quality assurance and record keeping the goal is to certify that every step of the analysis is valid the aspects that need to be particularly addressed will vary by laboratory government agencies have adopted them for their purposes as rules that must be followed for laboratory involved in analyzing substances that require regulations examples are pharmaceuticals formulation foods and environmentally important samples GLP can be defined as a body of rules operating procedures and practices established by a given organization that are considered to be mandatory with a view to ensuring quality and the correctness in the result product, uh, produced by a laboratory they all contain two common elements number one is the standard operating procedures that the sops and the quality assurance unit that is qau the standard operating procedures provide detailed description of activities performed by the laboratory examples are sample custody chain sample handling the preparation the analytical method instrument or maintenance achieving record keeping and the like one the detailed sample analysis procedures are provided for laboratory analyst or technicians to follow these are generally more detailed than given in scientific publications of developed method since the level of training and experience of different laboratory personnel will vary even though highly trained analytical chemist may needs less direction the quality assurance unit is generally independent from the laboratory and answers to the manager of the organization with which the laboratory is affiliated the qau is responsible for implementing quality procedures and assessing them on a continuous basis this will include audits of the laboratory from time to time the so next is the laboratory accreditation a form of external evaluation is laboratory accreditation by a formal organization or the government agency this is generally voluntary but may be required for laboratories dealing with regular uh, regulatory measurements accreditation is the procedure by which an authoritative body gives formal recognition that the laboratory is competent to carry out specific task the accreditation procedure may take the form of qualitative inspection of the laboratory operations to verify that good laboratory practices policies are followed that is proper documentation and record keeping or it may include measurement of submitted reference materials in any event 
सर्टिफिकेशन विल इन्वॉल्व पीरियोडिक लेबोरेटरी ऑडिट विच मे बी अनाउंस्ड नाउ वी डिस्कस हेयर अबाउट सम ऑफिशियल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन a number of government agencies and the national and international organizations have established their own guidelines for method validation and good laboratory practice some of them are international organization for standardization international conference on harmonization organization for economic cooperation and development food and drug administration environmental protection agency office of enforcement and compliances laboratory data so in this module we have learned about the uh, the various uh, laboratory practices are fo being followed in a good as a good laboratory practices the work is in analytical laboratory should be done properly so as to achieve maximum accuracy and to obtain the reliable results the glps ensure that the analysis carried out in a laboratory are done correctly and there is no manipulation of the results thank you so much